Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel here. Yes, I am making another video of Sorta of Online Fractured Daydream. And yeah, the last video was a few months ago, but this is besides the point. You probably already noticed if you played the closed beta earlier this year, this open network test was pretty much the same thing, if not identical, except from three additional characters and another boss raid, which I guess it's kind of the same thing. You know, a lot's happened this time in this open network test because when it first launched, Everyone had issues getting in, error codes left and right, took about 20 minutes before anybody can get in, and some people actually got lucky within those 20 minutes to get in, but I, I don't think anyone could play a match during that time. Now look, I don't want to waste y'all's time, but I gotta see this as a closed beta tester. I wasn't feeling the same hype as I did previously in the closed beta, only because I've already gone through the same locales and of course the Skull Reaper numerous times previously. The only thing this time around was appealing to me was the new characters that they added, which was Asuna, Lin, Fuka, and of course, the characters I haven't played before in the closed beta previously. Which I want to start off by saying is this, I still enjoy this game, right? But of course, they all have their unique set of pros and cons, but I'm not here talking about each one like I did previously in the previous video, only because the game literally comes out next Monday, September 30th for digital deluxe players, and fun fact, that's actually Asuna's birthday if you did not know that. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste most y'all's time, but if you are here, welcome. Thank you for coming along into this little video that I just put together in a short period of time, and I know the production value is could probably be the same as some other previous videos, but I'm still glad to have you here if you're watching, so thank you. All right. Shall we get started? As I said, I'm not going to go too much detail of the beta itself as majority of it was already talked about in the previous video, which you can click on the top card above to go watch it. All right, so I'm going to be focusing on the feeling of these characters as a whole and what I expect for the full package of the game. Firstly, every character feels incredible. Some are slow, some are perfect, and some are so fucking fast. I played a few sessions with a couple of buddies of mine, which are down in the description below if you want to go check them out, which tell them I sent you. One session, my friend Avatar Yaya specifically said out loud, Bro, why is Asuna so fucking fast? Which is exactly what I said when I first played her, and yeah, why is she so fast in this game? Aside from her title, The Lightning Flash, but I guess they did it on purpose for all these references, like I said previously. Now, the more we played this game, we all had a great time, but we all felt like the fatigue set in really fast the more we played. Since the open network test was extremely limited, we couldn't help but think there has to be more within the game. Like more modes, like PvP, or more stages. This can't be the entire game, could it? And my friend Jordan brought up a really good point when we were talking about this game, and yeah, is there gonna be more? I know there's gonna be story mode, and I know that the game is gonna be focusedly on multiplayer for the most part. Now granted, my number one thing about this game is not really so for the multiplayer, but it's for the story, because I, I enjoy SAO, I enjoy the story, the characters, and everything. This can't be the entire package, could it? That's what I'm really, really worried about. All right, let's talk about the characters. All right, let's start off with Asuna because she felt very, very fast, which again, perfect for her character. She can get in and out of situations fairly quickly, even though sometimes no matter how fast you are, it just isn't enough. Lin, on the other hand, was kind of a disappointment for me only because I wish she was faster than Asuna, but that's literally how she is kind of like in the anime that granted I haven't seen the anime since 2018 when it first premiered but uh, I am going to definitely give it a rewatch because season two is about to come out but yeah I wanted to see how fast she can do everything because you know she's the pink devil but really the dodging animations kind of the closest we're gonna get it just kind of reminds me of silver from sonic 06 where you see silver flying through the air so fast but in game it's slow um I don't know, that's just kind of how I felt. Now everything else about Lin I think is perfectly fine, she's basically Fatal Bullet insert. There's really nothing else I can say. If you played Fatal Bullet you know what I'm talking about because everything that you control here for her is perfect. Which I didn't notice from before in the close beta, but apparently when you are a ranged character in the ranger category, you can't block. So your only option is to dodge. I gotta learn that from Piccolo. It really didn't dawn on me that you couldn't dodge until I played Lin, funny enough. Not to mention I'm always forgetting that you can guard in this game, like, there's really a rare time for anybody to guard and the way it's placed on the controller is kinda weird, it's on the R2 button if you're playing on PlayStation. It's just a weird spot personally and I always just end up dodging anyway. Not to mention there's a limited control scheme in this game, but what can you do? 
All right, now here's Fuka, which she's actually in a weird spot for me because I didn't really use her in Fatal Bullet, but correct me if I'm wrong for people that did. Is this how she played in Fatal Bullet? Because I'm just missing my shots 80% of the time, which in turn isn't a fun time for me, which don't get me wrong, I think her elemental grenades are pretty unique, but I just can't hit my target with these things. Like, damn. All right, for the characters that I missed in the closed beta that are reappearing in the open network test, like everybody else, the first one we're gonna go with is Agil. I was not the greatest with Agil due to how slow he is, but man, he really packs a punch with each attack and he just absorbs damage like a sponge. When the game fully comes out, I am definitely gonna be playing more of him. He was legit that much fun to play as. And if you end up getting the 30% movement mod during your run, Ooh, he just zooms in across the fields, like, and making his gameplay just more entertaining. Now, Egil was not the only one that surprised me. It was actually Argo as well. I had no idea how Argo was going to be playing as in this game. She's basically like the Wolverine in the group, going super fast and dealing damage like no tomorrow, basically wrecking havoc upon the battlefield. If you just want to go ape shit on every enemy that you can see, you choose Argo. Now, Oberon, the Fairy King, or AKA Sugo, I still don't like his character by any means, but playing as him in this game is a different story. Yeah, I played him once in the closed beta, but now that I actually was changing characters this time, not picking the same two characters from last time, he's actually very interesting. Granted, there are some things that I just don't like about his combat. He's really slow sometimes, and he kind of relies on his advanced skills way too much, which in turn makes him pretty useless in my opinion on some aspects. There are great two AoEs, but his teleportation one is just... I don't know when to use this exactly. I'll probably figure it out once the game fully comes out. But honestly, I really didn't use the teleportation as it just wasn't a great useful thing for me. All right, I guess it's that time where I kind of get a little bit worried about the game and what I'm going to be talking about. I guess the real meat and potatoes of this video and what I want to say for the full release, mind you. Now, back when I was saying earlier, these co-op quests and boss raids, I... I think they're not gonna hold players attention for very long if this is all the game has to really offer besides the story mode. I think the gameplay is great. It's not perfect, mind you, as some instances, just hitting people with your advanced skills sometimes is gonna be missing or you're in the wrong position. And it's, it's not always a guarantee that you're gonna hit your opponent or anything like that. And that issue really wasn't fixed, except for now you can do motion cancel, which is new to the open network beta test. It's a little change. I really didn't really think about it once I was playing the game entirely because I didn't really feel anything different with it. It's a very minor change and honestly couldn't tell you if it was needed or not. And like I said previously in the previous video, this game has a lot of potential. I hope it really lives up to it. We'll see when it's fully released and hopefully I am wrong that there are hopefully I'm wrong that it's not just those two modes. I really do hope it's more than that. If you're going to be focusing on multiplayer, you have to have different modes. I'd like to see a PvP, but the way Fatal Bullet was handled with PvP and so-called quests, I, I, can't, I can't really remember if Fatal Bullet had that option. I know it had PvP, and I did play a little bit of it, and I thought it was okay, but it looks like they're going to be full hands-on deck with this one. So if there is a PvP, I think that'll be great. You can get unique rewards if you did that or you can go on story quests together with a friend and you can experience the story together i think that would be great there's a lot of things that people can do in this game besides just co-op quests and boss raids i mean there has to be more than maybe there's an open world i doubt that i don't think they have talked about that i haven't really been digging into the news of fractured daydream i've just been talking about the close and open network test that's the only thing that i do know about this game and besides like the season pass that straya from the game verse is actually going to be pairing which caught me out of guard because just like okay what universe is this that's a whole different discussion because that in the game verse like I said but I don't think this game is set in the game verse as the game verse ended in Lost Recollection but like I said that's a discussion for another time if I ever make that video which I don't know if I am or not but like I said we'll see within the full release what they're gonna be coming up with and hopefully they can have all these different modes because I don't want this game to just die out in the wind because Sparking Zero is on the corner around this game. It's literally like a week in between. So we'll see. We'll see. 
Speaking of the final release, if you did play the open network test, all your data from your rewards and stuff, your weapons, everything is just going to be turning into the final game. I'm just really glad I actually got the rewards from the co-op quest this time. All right, I think I've covered enough about this game until it fully releases. I think I've had a great time overall. Just the last bit of the open network test, I just kind of was a little bit disappointed because I've already experienced this since the closed beta and it wasn't really that much different. The Sword Golem is really nothing to talk about. It's just a long, long boss fight than it really needs to be because it's just you're hitting the legs the entire time and that's pretty much it. Nothing special. Unless you're Shinon and you're just sniping the head the entire time like I did. So, uh... There's that. However, there is one thing I want to address, and it's something that developers had taken away from us. And it's the fun of spamming. <laughs> I want this back. 